Next on MLR Weekly, Chicago Hounds head coach Sam Harris, formerly of the Austin Gilgronies, and headlines with Rugby Mornings, John Fitzpatrick. Rugby wrap-up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody and welcome to this week's MLR Weekly as presented by Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy here in New York City and no, I am not hoarse from yelling at the screen because I despise soccer. I am sick and I have no voice, which I know many of you are very happy about, but we're going to do the show anyway. So with that, I have none other than Mr. John Fitzpatrick with our recurring MLR Weekly segment. Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick. John, take it away. Hey, Matt, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Let's talk a little trade alert right now. Is that Kramer? No, that's you. Oh. It's, uh, it's, it's the Godfather, too. Just kidding. Speaking of offers that you couldn't refuse, there's been a few trade alerts in MLR the past couple of days coming out from the dispersal draft. Let's start with Houston. Houston sent prop... Juan Pablo Zis and fullback Marcos Moroni to the Dallas Jackals in exchange for salary cap considerations in 2023. Heist or Zeist? Oh, or is it tomato, tomato, Zeist, and Zeist? Let's call the whole thing off. Next! Let's keep going with the trades. Atlanta sent Connor Mooneyham, who they just acquired in the 2022 dispersal draft. They sent Connor Mooneyham to Seattle for Seattle's third round pick in the 2023 MLR collegiate draft and salary cap considerations in 2023. Wild stuff there. Wild, crazy stuff, yeah. Mooneyham, three teams, two years. Next! Mooneyham probably replaces Ross Neal, the big winger who retired, unfortunately, because of some concussion concerns. Yes, Ross Neal, a unit and a good guy. I swam with him at Tony Ridnell's Lake House in Seattle. Next! Sleepless in Seattle. Part two. How about Utah and Houston? Last trade here. Utah, they received salary cap considerations in 2023 and Houston's second round pick in the 2023 MLR Collegiate Draft. And they sent the um, the fifth overall pick in the 2022 Dispersal Draft to Houston. Houston, of course, turned around and selected your boy, a former L.A. Giltini's flinger, Hanko Kermishash. Yes, is he going to sign? That's a good question because... We can get into this in a bit, but all of the players that the Chicago Hounds have selected in the draft, it's quite an impressive roster. Will all those players sign? We'll find out, but a few have already started to. It's not going to be that huge all-star team from Los Angeles and Austin that's uh, bandied about on the internet. It's going to be a solid team, a very good team, and could be one of the better teams in the league. I agree. I think instant contender, if, if... Half of those players sign. How about one more? Former San Diego Legion prop, Patty Ryan. What a perfect fit for Chicago, right? Uh, as you know, I used to work in Chicago, and Patty, uh, Patty Ryan, the Irish version, I believe, was born in Chicago. Next! New England Free Jacks. Unfortunately, Harry Barlow will not return in 2023. Utility back. He announced on Instagram that he wants to pursue a different career away from rugby but he hasn't ruled out a return to MLR in the future. So, Harry, best of luck. Hopefully we see you again in MLR pretty soon. Excellent. Next. Let's keep it going with the Free Jacks. They brought back your boy, Namibian flanker, Conradi. What a great name he has. And anyway, he played he played 61 minutes in Namibia's win over Canada, which is interesting, right? Because Conradi now plays for Canada South, the New England Free Jacks. Or the Flapjacks or Flapjackals, but the Flapjacks, Flapjackals might have the best back row in the league. Next! Yes, they might indeed. How about Old Glory DC? Speaking of locks, they re-signed Tavita Nikwali. He is a big Fijian. He is a unit. He scored four tries last season. He's coming back to Old Glory DC in 2023. Yeah, he's that beef that they need. Every team needs beef like that. Next! Last but not least, how about Rugby New York? They re-signed utility back John Powers. He was originally drafted seventh overall by the Utah Warriors in the 2020 MLR Collegiate Draft. But every time I hear John Powers, I hear that one song. I got power. 
Bow Wow. You know what I'm talking about. You're a club guy. I, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like a club guy right now. And you never have seen Mike DeBulis of Washington and John Powers in the same room at the same time, oh. have you? No. Just that saying. That's an interesting point. Next! An update on your boy Lance Williams. He finally joins the men's Eagles. Seventh team in Dubai. Good for him, but should have been on the 15 squad. Is that all you got for us, John? I got one more thing on this the day of my daughter's wedding. Matt, please get a lozenger. Your throat sounds terrible, but we hope you get better soon. Okay, Gabish? Oh, that was just, that was, that was awful. That was really awful. And I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Get off the show. On that note, I want to thank John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning for this week's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. We'll be right back with head coach of the Chicago Hounds, Sam Harris, after this. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle, and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy, it's she If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back and have the honor of welcoming to the show Mr. Sam Harris, the new coach of the Chicago Hounds. Sam, welcome back. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Always an honor to to be requested to come onto this show and uh, and I love the way that you spread the word of rugby across this great nation and across the world. Well, thank you, sir. I thank you, sir. But it's not going to exempt you from facing some hard questions on this segment, sir. I just have you know that. Uh, I would ex- I would expect nothing less. All right. So let's let's get some things out of the way. First of all, you were the head coach of Austin. They are no longer in existence after some front office kerfuffle. We'll leave it at that in terms of salary cap and, and getting uh, knocked out of the league at the end of the season last year or disqualified from the playoffs, I should say. L.A. also went out. So the Los Angeles Giltinis and the Austin Gilgronis, owned by Adam Gilchrist, are both out of the league. And what happened is Chicago came into the league and Chicago had a draft of players from teams and you became the head coach of Chicago. You were born in New Zealand, but moved to Australia at a very young age. So are you Australian or are you a Kiwi, sir? Yeah, I consider myself Australian. Uh, my mother's a Maldi and my dad's Australian. So I'm a, I'm a 50-50, I'm a Mozzie. Um, but I grew up in Australia, represented schoolboys and 21s for Australia in rugby um, and consider myself Australian. And you played rugby league and you played rugby union and i think that you, you all you played for the waratahs and western force in rugby union correct and played for the manly seagulls and the west tigers in rugby league so you're in chicago now you went from austin warmer climate in austin you're about to experience the full brunt of a chicago winter how nervous are you no it's it's, it's not going to be too bad I, I lived in japan for eight years to the um, the winters there were pretty cold. I, I think Chicago is probably another level, but I'm used to it. <laughs> you're you're doomed if you're comparing Japan, my friend. You are absolutely doomed. Here we go. I'm going to ask you some questions about Chicago because you're there, and it's got a hot better rugby and passionate sports fans across the board. So here we go. Cubs or White Sox? White Sox. Frank Thomas was my favorite player when I was a kid playing baseball. Oh, all right. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. Okay. Uh, name one Chicago Cub. In history, Sammy Sosa. Follow-up question. Was Sammy Sosa also a member of the Chicago White Sox? Not to my knowledge. Would you prefer to be called Southside Sammy or Slammin' Sammy? I've been called Slammin' Sammy before, but I don't mind the, the sound of Southside Sammy, so I'll go with that one. Oh, you just endeared yourself to all the Chai Sox fans out there. Does the name O'Leary mean anything to you? Yeah, you said these were going to be softballs. These, these are tough questions. Um, no. Chicago Fire, no. sir, was, sco- was allegedly started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow. What was Michael Jordan's number when he played baseball? 45. Oh, you are killing it. You are absolutely killing it. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought you were go- I didn't think you were going to get any of these. Name one Chicago Bull. You could ask Bull. me Michael Jordan questions all, all day. Um, but uh, present Chicago Bull would be DeMar DeRozan or 
for who else have we got? Levine. Uh, All right, you're 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 on fire Levine. right now. You you answer the question, you're good. Moving on. Sure. What sport do the Chicago Blackhawks play? Ice hockey. Okay. All right. All right. So you're you're pretty good. You haven't been hit, ladies and gentlemen. He hasn't been in Chicago that long. He knows this stuff. Eberfuss means to be in a le- losing situation or is the name of the head coach of the Chicago Bears. No, this is yeah, this one's a bad one. I'm gonna say the head coach of the Chicago Ding Bears. ding ding, circle gets the square. You are correct, sir. Name any of the other head coaches of the professional teams in Chicago, and sorry, soccer does not count on this show. I'm not gonna be able to answer that. All right, okay. okay. We're gonna we're gonna play on. We're gonna play on. The Chicago Bears play at what venue? Soldier Field. Will Billy Meeks DTH or Matt Gitto be playing for the Chicago franchise? Possibly. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, poss- possibly. Whoa! Whoa! The the MLR officers' offices are now all a flutter with that answer, although he didn't really say anything, ladies and gentlemen. He just said, there's a maybe. There's a chance? You're telling me there's a chance? All right. Next, uh, let's see. Last question. Are you more excited to see Patty Ryan, the Irish American version, versus Patty Ryan, the Aussie version, now in San Diego with your squad? Wait, what's the question? Ah, uh, that was just to see if you could give me an acknowledgement that Patty Ryan was on your team, which you can't. So we're gonna move right on. All right, now we've yeah. got the rugby question. We know, we know we're not talking about we know we're not talking about those, Matt. But um, I, I, I do know Patty Ryan, the Irish version, is a very proud Chicago one. Yes, I, th- I think I think he was actually born in Chicago, which got him his American eligibility. I think you might be correct. Wow, you got through that round very well, Coach. I I, I am stunned. But we're going to come back and ask you some rugby questions right after this. Don't go away. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Back with Slammin, Sammy Harris, the head coach of the Chicago Hounds. And Sam, we've got some rugby questions for you. And the first couple might not be so uh, easy to answer. They're difficult questions, but let's get on with it. What do you say to those that argue that players from L.A. and Austin were mistreated in the sense that they didn't or aren't going to get the same monies or perks, perhaps, when they play for you guys or for another team in the MLR? Yeah, that's a tough question. I think they were, I don't know if they were mistreated, but they were definitely not awarded the same freedom that other players were in terms of a longer runway to negotiate with teams. Um, they had a very short amount of time to be able to, well, first of all, they they didn't have a say in who got their rights to, to you know, to have their first discussion. And then from there, they, they had a very short runway to make a decision. Um, I don't think they're going to be terribly mistreated, um, especially if they come to Chicago. Um, you know, I think every every player will be treated fair and reasonably and, and be looked after. Um, and I can't speak to the other teams, but I, from, from what I'm hearing, I don't think that um, many teams are – are finding it hard to find to find the money for the players that they've drafted. But I, I do think there might have been a, a, a few names on the list that got drafted late that, that didn't pick up contracts, and it's going to be really hard for them to find teams. So you know that's a, a really tough element. And and then yeah, there is the rare case where people probably aren't going to get their market value um, because of such a short runway. But but in saying that, and I know this is a long-winded question, to a uh, long-winded answer to your question, Matt. But um, I do also know that the MLR was trying very hard to give Major League Rugby 
every chance for LA and Austin to be sold. And so with that chance, you know, it, 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 we, they weren't able to achieve that goal. Um, but then what had to happen post that was a very short runway for the draft and for the signings. Yeah, and they, you know, you talk about the 11th hour. They were in the 11th hour, the 12th hour, the 13th hour, and then starting the whole process again, trying to save those two franchises or at least one of them. So, yeah, you know, mm. the owners took a lot of heat for that. And, you know, but there was no precedent. And this is all firsts for everybody, right? I do believe that everybody was do- trying their best for to get the best possible outcome. And I, I've got to say, I do really feel for the players on both teams um, in that scenario. What do you say to those that argue that the players taking money and or assets either undermined their teammates or even players in the league as a whole? Well, first of all, I think, Matt, you should have said allegedly before you said that statement. Let me um, add allegedly also, as per Sam Harris, my counsel. It's not any one individual player's responsibility to be completely across the salary cap and, and the ancillary benefits and how their specific contract fits into that piece of the puzzle um, you know, all one player is trying to do is you know look after their their best interests in terms of you know what their market value is and trying to get the best package they can. And then um, I don't think it's on them to 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 ask is this within does this fit in the right piece of the puzzle so that the rest of the team can fit under the salary cap. I don't I don't think that is um is the thing that they have to be in control of. Now in saying that I don't. This is, that's no admission of guilt, but I heard your conversation with Nick a couple of weeks ago, Nick, Nick Chaventa, and, um, right, and I thought it was a great conversation. He, I, I think both of you raised some really good points, um, but I, I think in terms of putting it back on the players, I don't think it's their responsibility to be considering that. I feel like at the, at the moment, everyone in the MLR especially is a little bit, um, and I, I'm talking about players, coaches, administrators, everybody is a little bit scared of a litigation at the moment. So everyone's very constricted, but I think, you know, I think the, the more people verbalize their thoughts and their opinions and, you know, even if it's contrasting to anybody else's, I think, I think conflict is good in, in the game. And I think conflict brings uh, eyeballs and, and attraction. And, you know, we, we could go through this and not saying a word about anything, but I don't, I don't see what that achieves. All right, Coach, now we've got some questions from that other hard-hitting rugby journalist in the Americas, Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. He'd like to know uh, when the reality that Austin wasn't going to be coming back in MLR, Major League Rugby, was your initial reaction to look elsewhere or to try to look within the league? Great question, Brian, and I always uh, enjoy his comments and outlook on the game. You can tell him to go f himself, coach. He's Canadian. <laughs> I know he's Canadian. Uh, Australians have got a great affinity, with, great affinity with Canadians. Um, but I think, from from my point of view, you know, the last kind of four to five months has been um, really, really tough on a lot of people involved with both clubs. Um, but in saying that, I wouldn't change a thing because. You know, the last two years has been a really enjoyable experience apart from that element. And I really enjoyed my time here in Austin, uh, you know, building something special, having complete autonomy on the, on the program. And, um, and uh, yeah, I've made no bones about it that I love America and I love American sports. Um, and then kind of to piggyback off that, you know, since, since arriving here in, in America, but my children have really enjoyed the schooling system and, and building friends within the community. My wife is, is really enjoying herself. So we're, we're enjoying what America brings and, you know, the scope and the, you know, the doors it opens and, you know, the conversations that you have and the people that you get to meet and the exposure to this huge market of, of sport and, and business and commerce and, um, just interesting people. So we're, we were really enjoying our experience here in America. So um, I was looking at all options and was getting some offers from overseas. And um, But ultimately, I did want to stay in the States. And at the 11th hour, the Chicago opportunity came along. And, um, you know, again, in the press conference, I stated how much I've always loved Chicago. So, you know, that in, in turn with a great ownership group, um, you know, James English, the general manager, was really good to work with. So, 
I kind of jumped at the chance and, and really look forward to it. Here's another question from Brian. You've got uh, allegedly players from Austin coming onto your squad, right? You'll have team. You'll have players from other teams uh, as well. How much do, do the the group that comes from Austin allegedly add to the cohesiveness for you guys? Yeah, and and even the, the LA element because you know we were exposed to that team as well, and so I think the the cohesiveness of the guys from Austin coming in is great because they know my system and they know what's expected and they know they, they don't have to have any new learnings per se. Um, and the, and the LA guys that we picked up, you know, their cohesiveness because they work together is great. Then I think a lot of that group are, are very quick learners um, and, and will pick up my system pretty quickly. And then the, the, the new guys in the periphery, um, that have come from other teams or, or other areas will add to the to what makes Chicago really special and, and and give us a really good platform. So all right, so I got a combination of Brian's next question with with one of my own, and you basically kind of hinted at it in terms of continuation of what you've been doing the last two years down in Austin. So when you drafted players, did you draft them to fit in the Sam Harris system or just draft the best available talent and see what happens. That's a good question. I think it's a, a little from column A and a little from column B. I think, um, but, uh, and I think they're kind of one in the same as well. Where I think some of the the, the great players that were available, if, you know, if we can if we can get some of them over the line, I think they'll add to the group and and pick up the system pretty quickly and um, and maybe even take it to another level. Because you guys, you guys were very good on both sides of the ball last year. You, you know, up in the pack and then getting it out in that back line. It was a dynamite back line. And I'm just wondering if, if you don't have the availability of certain players, do you tweak your system to match the guys that you're coming in? Because we have a perfect example of that with the Chicago Bears not letting Justin Field be himself, right? Yeah, and if you look internationally, probably you could say the same about England and Marcus Smith and um, – yeah, so I think that'll be a, a teething process through the, the preseason, um, but but I don't think that that my system's too difficult to to learn, and um, I think it'll, it'll it it could potentially take some players game to a new level. This isn't a typical uh, franchise coming into the league in terms of when Dallas came in, they didn't have the opportunity to draft from other teams the way you guys have, and they didn't have a dispersal draft of two very good rugby teams to pick because really you guys can be one of the better teams in the league overnight. Does that put added pressure on you? Uh, yeah, but, but wanted pressure for sure. Um, I, I, I would want that expectation and I'll, I'll be, I'll be broadcasting that to my players as well. Um, but in saying that we also haven't had the long runway that Dallas had to, to build processes, logistics, fan bases, all that stuff, you know, even down to kit. I, I don't know what we're going to be training in in December, in, in January. Um, jersey, is the jersey going to get here on time? Well, there's a, you know, we've had a very short runway to, to, to organize accommodation for the players and well, there's gotta be a stuff. whole bunch. So, of, there's got to be a whole bunch of Austin stuff floating around that you could wear in the meantime. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, there, there is so that, yeah. There's there's pros and cons, and but I think in, to your answer though that there the with the people that I was able to draft, the players that I was able to draft, and and the players that hopefully I can get over the line in the next couple of weeks. And when I say we, when I say me, I, I really mean James English because he's he's doing a great job behind the scenes getting all that knocked over. Um, yeah, I think I think we should have a, a, a pretty high expectation on us. But in saying that. The Western Conference is going to be a very tough con conference. And, you know, I think Seattle and San Diego have done an amazing job recruiting. The, you know, they'll have all-star teams and we'll, we'll have our work cut out for us to, to do well and, and to reach the, the postseason in, in the Western Conference. You, you brought up Jam, uh, James English, who I, is either the CEO or GM. I'm not sure which title it is. Is it, is it a combination of both? Yeah, I think so. I, I haven't got clarity on that one either, but he's... He's, he, he, there aren't enough hours in the day for him at yeah. the moment, but he's doing a great job of managing it. And, um, yeah, I think he's, he's the right man for the job. Do you have a question of him not wearing shoelaces in his sneakers? 
because that drives me nuts. <laughs> How about the venue? Are you playing at SeatGeek? Yeah, we're playing at SeatGeek. Um, previously Toyota Field, I think. Great stadium. Probably will be the one of the best, if not the best stadium in the league. Um, and really looking forward to playing out of there. I know it's going to be cold. We've got a lot of games in March and uh, I have heard that the hill the field is heated, which is which will be a great feature for the players. I don't know how, I don't know if the seats are heated in the stands, but um, I'm sure the Chicago faithful will be coming out in droves. And and the stadium itself has been a really good partner up until this this point. Um, that they're allowing us to to train out of there as well and use that as our base. So I think that gives us a lot of comfort to know that you know we'll be working out of one area rather than schlepping all over the city. For a, for a gym session and then coming back from field session and then going somewhere else to meet. So um, I think that that was a big element to give a lot of the players a, a fair bit of um, faith that you know we've got some some big rocks sorted out. I've been there. It's a great facility. I was a while back when um, the Mallory came in to play the Eagles. I think at that stadium. It was yeah, a great venue. And of course the the magic answer for, for those Chicago fans who are very hardy and are used to going to Chicago Bears games on Soldier Field on the lake. As long as there's beer being served, everybody will be fine. <laughs> and on that note, we are out of time. Thank you, Mr. Sam Harris. Thank you, John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including The Rugby Odds, The College Rugby Wrap-Up, Hit that subscribe button on YouTube, join our weekly newsletter, tell your friends about us, and please sign up for our American Red Cross blood donor team.